Okay, welcome back everybody. This is Journals and Journal Article Types, uh, part two of these two video lectures. And uh, this is part two. Uh, and you should know that different elements, empirical, primary, peer-reviewed, uh, you should understand those concepts. If you don't, uh, stop now, go back to the first lecture, watch it again, take notes, make sure that you understand those concepts. Okay, so the topics that we'll be talking about are the different types of journal articles, research articles, literature reviews, meta-analyses, theoretical reviews, and then finally I want to talk about uh, journal article topics, that is psychology and the psych psychological subfields. So first off, uh, what is a research article? This is one of the main things we're going to be dealing with uh, this semester in your assignments, so what is it? A research article is a report on the empirical work of an author of an article and appears in a peer-reviewed journal. So that's what it is. It's the work of an author who is writing a paper about their own work. It's empirical work and that paper has been peer-reviewed. So a research article is primary, empirical, and it should be, if you're going to use it uh, in any class really, peer-reviewed. Examples, a uh, couple examples you can look at the Journal of Applied Social Psychology. Uh, they have like two or three different types of articles uh, in this journal. You want to look at the original articles, though the other type of articles, which is I think the short papers or something like that, would also be good examples also of research articles. Uh, there are also good examples of, uh, these are also good examples of social psych articles. And you often get some good I.O. or especially organizational behavior articles in that journal. Next type is a literature review. In writing a literature review, a psychologist reviews the published research articles on a topic and then writes a paper which presents these research articles organized by some conceptual theme or themes, uh, such as uh, theory being tested, methodology being used, sample, uh, population, something like that. And then they draw conclusions based on organizing the research studies. So in a literature review, uh, an author is going to review 40 or 50 or 60 articles, uh, research articles, uh, on a topic and then organize them together. Uh, these literature reviews uh, should draw conclusions. Uh, about the group of research articles that they reviewed, and these uh, should be peer-reviewed uh, articles. So literature reviews are not empirical, they're not primary, and they should be peer-reviewed. Couple examples, the Annual Review of Psychology. Uh, we have this uh, here in paper format and uh, uh, electronic format in the library website. You can search that very easily. Uh, the Annual Review of Psychology comes out every year uh, and there are different cha review chapters in it. And uh, each chapter is on a current topic and they ask a couple famous researchers in the field to write about that topic. Uh, or Psych Bulletin, Psych Bull, uh, you know, Psychological Bulletin. Uh, is a monthly journal which has literature reviews or meta-analyses. And if you go and look at different issues of Psych Bull, uh, you can easily see which one is a literature review and which one is a meta-analysis. I think that almost always, if it's a meta-analysis, meta-analysis is in the title. Recently, uh, we've seen more systematic literature reviews. And with the advent of computer databases like PsychInfo, uh, what happens is you could find hundreds of research articles on a topic. And so uh, there's always been a question you know, about whether or not you've done the research well. So now what they're doing is they're actually being very explicit about what you know, databases they're searching, what search terms they're using. Uh, and then listing the resulting articles found. Uh, and then after you generate the articles to read from that, you read them and then review them like a literature review. 
And like a literature review, a systematic lit review is not empirical, it's not primary, and it should be peer-reviewed. However, it may confuse you because it has a methods and results section. And this is not a methods uh, and results for the uh, what they use to collect data on behavior, but it's the method and results that they used for the uh, search for library articles. And so, uh, you know, what they're talking about in terms of method is which search engines we used, which search terms we used, not specifically what empirical methods they used on, you know, what empirical methods they used to collect data from human beings or animals. The latter would make it psychology, but uh, in empirical, but this would still be non-empirical. The next uh, type is meta-analyses. And as I said before, you could find dozens or hundreds of articles on one topic. And that's getting too much to really uh, you know, read them all and try to organize them conceptually. And so the idea of the meta-analysis was created. Uh, in conducting a meta-analysis, a researcher first searches for research articles on a specific topic. Then the researcher collates the statistical information in the, public re in the publicized research articles, such as the sample size and the effect size, and uses that data in further statistical tests. And so what's going on is a meta-analysis is a paper where you conduct statistics on statistics of other papers. So a meta-analysis is not empirical because you're not collecting data uh, from human beings about their behavior or from animals about their behavior. Uh, it's primary uh, because you are doing a statistical analysis yourself and you're writing about it, so that makes it primary. And it, it should be peer-reviewed. Uh, and the meta-analysis is primary because the researcher is writing about the work they did. Anything they say about the studies they read are secondary, but when they talk about, I found that there is a significant relationship between this and that, uh, then that's a primary conclusion. And finally, we have the theoretical review. And this is like a literature review, but instead of talking about all of the research articles on a given topic, uh, the author is reviewing all the research articles or research articles about a given theory. And so a psychologist reviews published research articles on a theory and writes a paper which pre presents conclusions about that theory. Uh, they should draw conclusions about the theory based on the research articles that they reviewed. And it should be published in a peer-reviewed journal. So therefore, theoretical reviews are not empirical, they're not primary, and they should be peer-reviewed. Uh, the difference between a literature re review and a theoretical review are, are very slight. The literature review should focus on research articles. The theoretical review should focus on a theory. And so both are reading research articles, but the literature review is more empirical, if you want to call it, in that it's observing what uh, these different articles have found and drawing conclusions about that. A theoretical review uh, is looking at the theory and looking at whether or not there's support for the theory in the published literature regarding the articles, the research articles. And you could say that a, a theoretical review is a subtype of a lit review. So, for example, a literature review might be on the topic of uh, gender personality traits and the processing of information about gender, where the author is going to look at all studies that look at personality traits and the processing of information about gender. A theoretical review would be on a more specific topic, such as BEM's gender schema theory. Uh, that is a very specific theory about personality traits and gender and the processing of information about gender. Uh, but it's one person's theory, and you're going to focus the literature review just on that. And that's the difference between the two. And then finally for this video lecture, I'd like to talk about 
psychological topics and uh, subfield topics. Uh, first off, this is a course in psychology. Psychology is in the title. Therefore, it surprises me that students will submit articles or ask students to find an article uh, about psychology that interests them or about uh, social psychology that interests them. And they turn in a non-psychological article. It's a research article, but there's a lot of other fields other than psychology. And so, for example, education is not psychology. Mental retardation is not psychology. Business is not psychology. Psychiatry is not psychology. And you have been a psych major long enough, or you should have at least taken enough psychology courses to have a good understanding of what psychology is. So it's, it's kind of shocking that students will not submit uh, a psychology article. So one very important warning is that, yes, you need to really think about whether the article that the computer gave you is a psychology article or not. And this is really based on your judgment that you should develop going through different courses. Also, uh, this is a, a more common problem in my uh, courses such as Social Psych, OB, Consumer Behavior, and IO Psychology. For example, in each one I'll say, uh, find an article, a research article, in this field, like consumer behavior. And so people will then submit an article about depression and SSRIs, which has nothing to do with consumer behavior. And again, I'm, I'm shocked that they're not really paying attention to what they're submitting. Uh, and, you know, that's going to be a failure. That's, that's going to be a failure, and I don't want you to fail. So uh, you should be very cautious about identifying psychological or sub-discipline topics in psychology. And the only thing I can say is apply the definition. Uh, if I ask you for a psychology article, apply the definition of psychology. And does that article fit that definition? Uh, if you're in IO Psych, and I say find an IO Psych article, apply the definition. Does that article's topic fit the definition of IO Psych? Uh, you're just going to be able to do that by knowing the field and knowing what subtopics are common. Even in, for example, consumer psychology. Uh, I'm not going to give you this assignment until a couple weeks into the semester. So you've been reading uh, the textbook for a couple of weeks, you should start to develop an understanding for what the discipline is. You should come across the definition. So you just need to apply those. I can add, uh, offer you a couple heuristics uh, for identifying psychology topics. And uh, in this case, I'm really talking to my research method students. Uh, First off, is it a psychology topic or not? Well, first off, ask yourself the question, do we offer a class on that topic in our department that is psychology? Uh, we don't, for example, offer an educational psychology course. We don't offer a psychiatry course. So there you go. Uh, and this may seem basic, but a lot of students you know, get tripped up by this. Is psychology part of the name of the journal? Uh, because when you're you know, submitting an article from uh, Psychiatric Quarterly, well, there's no psychology in the name of that journal. And then another neat trick, which is a heuristic, is what are the author's uh, affiliations? That is, uh, in a journal article, you'll uh, see right in the title page uh, where the authors work. And so look to see if they teach in the psychology department. If it says they are in the Department of Psychiatry or they're in a business school, then you may want to be careful about that one and look closely at it. Uh, the heuristics, again, will fail. Uh, there's a lot of gray areas. People in business departments could write uh, a really good psychological research article. Uh, and you'll probably find a lot of good work from people in a psychiatric department. A psychiatry department. Uh, you know, I can't you know really give you any hard or fast rules. You just have to develop an understanding of it yourself. Uh, and then also, the Journal of Interpersonal Violence doesn't have psychology in it, but it has a gr lot of great social psych articles. So I guess the only thing I can say is, unless you're sure, stay away from those gray area topics. 
Okay, uh, finally, uh, we're at the end of this lecture and a couple things I'd like to say. Uh, if you'd watched this lecture once and it doesn't make any sense, that's pretty normal. Understanding this lecture is based on understanding empirical, primary, and peer-reviewed. And if you're saying to yourself, this lecture was confusing or it doesn't make sense, I ask you right now, can you give me the definitions of those three elements? And if you can't, that's probably why you can't make sense of this whole lecture. Uh, normal studying involves repetition. So if this is the first time through these lectures, then you may need to go through it again. Also, normal studying involves meta-reflection. Uh, that is, thinking about what you should be thinking about. So when you are trying to learn material, uh, say to yourselves, what parts of this lecture do I need to memorize and which parts are not that important? What's the key issues that I should really understand? And then kind of you know test yourselves. Can I create examples of primary articles? Is my textbook primary? Is the dictionary primary? Uh, and just play around with the concepts until you feel like you understand them. And this applies to the uh, topic and the subtopic problem. Uh, in social psych, we're reading about uh, several examples of social psych experiments every week. Uh, so why don't you have a good gut feeling for what social psych is or isn't? And probably because you're not really understanding the material that you're reading in class. And when you do, you're, you're going to start to really develop an a intuitive understanding of a lot of these things. All right, so that's the lecture. And I'll see you in class or see you on the internet.